Whether HSC, SACE, WACE or VCE, tens of thousands of our best and brightest will get completely frazzled trying to work their way to a high score. I hate my life! <laughs> but remember, there are plenty of successful, sexy people going around who reckon your Year 12 results aren't the be-all and end-all. At 99.7 as an ATAR, it really, it doesn't matter. You know, I travelled for eight months this year and no one asks, no one really cares. Gus Picking finished his VCE last year and now, well, I've never heard of him. You don't have to freak out about your score. You can always find a path to the career you want. In fact, the fully successful and sexy Mark Wahlberg, Kerry Stokes, Sir Richard Branson, Shannon Bennett, Simon Cowell and Steve Price didn't even finish high school. So, what does that tell you? That we should probably talk to some women about it. Take it away, actor slash comedian Nikki Britton. It doesn't matter. I haven't been asked for years and years what I got. Uh, the only time I've ever revealed it to people is a punchline in a joke. Nobody hires you because of your ATAR. They hire you because of what your interests are, what your personality's like. I never allowed the pressure of exams to get to me, which would probably explain why I repeated Year 11. There are even some Australian schools officially giving kids a permission slip to stop caring so much about their final scores. Our approach is quite diverse, so, you know, we, we don't discourage the ATAR, of course, but we also understand and recognise that success comes in many different forms. Collaboration, creativity, critical thinking. If you are going to teach to the test, how is that going to best prepare students uh, for a world that's rapidly changing. Look dudes, point is, if you don't do as well as you'd hope in year 12, for whatever reason, just know that life has a way of getting fully lit if you work hard for it. No matter how appallingly you do in your exams, there's always the safety net of show business. Joining us now is mathematician and Australia's favourite teacher, Eddie Wu. Now Eddie, you're a maths genius. You must have absolutely nailed school. Oh look, that's a bit of a misconception, even though I can see why some people might think that now that I work in a school and it's my business. But when I was at school, particularly in the subject area I teach mathematics, I was a real struggler. I was the person who was like, sir, I'm still not getting it, it's not clicking, can you explain it again? So that struggle, I think, was something I'm really attuned to seeing whenever I have my own students in class. Eddie, a quick one, six times nine. 54. He's very good. He's very good. <laughs> what sort of advice would you give, Eddie, to parents? It's a very stressful time of the year. What sort of mood should there be at home when this is all happening around us? Look, I often think, even of my own children, who are still relatively young, that just being there and being normal with them, like I took my kids to the basketball on the weekend, and we just didn't talk about anything. You know, we're trying to think about, uh, you know, which school you're going to go to next year and different issues about, like, your final end of year exams or reports. And you know what? It's just really nice for kids to get a space with their family where they don't have to think about any of that. Just be human with them and cultivate that relationship in time. Don't talk to your kids about anything. <laughs> Check. <laughs> Got it. That's not what I said. <laughs> That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Um, look, there'll be people watching this who they'll do their best and then the exam results will come out uh, at the end of year 12 and they'll be really disappointed. What advice do you have for people in that situation? I'd use that as a motivator. I think that uh, back to, I think it was Nelson Mandela who was paraphrased to say, you know, I, I never fail. I only succeed or I learn. And if you're disappointed, you know what? Use that as, you know, fire in your belly to get going and work harder. But at the same time, I think it's really important to recognise that not everything that matters can be measured in an exam like that. Huge parts of forming a relationship, communicating with people face to face, a lot of those things just aren't going to come through a pen and paper test, and that's fine. So keep things in perspective and learn to move on. It's okay. So that was advice, but how did you explain that to your parents? Because my Egyptian father used to make me do push-ups for every percentage that I missed on a maths test. So if I got 85%, that was 15 push-ups, uh, which is why I'm such a tank. How did, um, how did you manage those expectations with your, I don't believe that's your parents? <laughs> well, while I didn't have an Egyptian father like yours, I did have some pretty tough migrant parents of my own. Yeah. And um, as you can see, I think maybe we met to the same trainer. Like, yeah. we've got the same physique, I'd say, Willie. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I think that, that that management of expectations expectations uh, is really tricky. I remember my parents, they didn't want me to go into education. That was not what they saw for me in the future. So I think you've got to really recognize
reckon with yourself? Like, you've got to ask that question really, really carefully. What matters to you? What's going to matter long term? And then, you know, gauge your emotional, you know, compass and all of the decisions you're going to make around those choices. Gauge them in terms of that long term view. I think that's keeping that perspective is what really helps. So, Eddie, what can you bench? <laughs> what can I bench? I literally, I don't even lift so much that I don't even know how much I can't bench. So there's your answer. <laughs> okay, we've finished comparing physiques. Time to go. Eddie, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks, guys. Have a good one.